if you even got investment offers and partnership opportunities through the exposure they got. I'm sure that season one is going to be Adams. We'll tell you a little more about that in presentation. As Scotiabank Small Business Development Manager, I can tell you that we have faith in the ability of small business to thrive and grow. This is a very important segment of our business at Scotiabank, and we truly believe in our business owners. That is why we have invested in a dedicated small business team of managers and officers work with our entrepreneurial customers. We also provide great tools on our website, such as business plan writers and cash flow calculators. I would urge you to take time and go on that website. It's free of cost and it has to be and And we offer an increasing range of products and services aimed at small businesses. We focus on small business even more intently this year, and you may have heard or you may have attended one of several seminars or workshops at Scotiabank Health in recent months at most of our branches where presenters shared advice or anything from, from, on anything from bookkeeping to business. As a complement to these activities, it is our participants such as the one we have with Bank on Me, the partnerships, such as the one we have with Bank on Me, that allows Scotiabank to help reach and educate of our winner and our finalists who have been very gracious in this phase of promoting season two by sharing their stories and supporting our efforts. We are proud of that entire cohort and I'm pleased to say we had 100% attendance at everything and almost completely on time. Quite remarkable. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I would particularly like to recognize the presence of our winner of season one, Christina Adams. Christina. <laughs> Christina has been a worthy winner who attracted several offers of equity investment from our investor pool. <coughs> And we are pleased to have Mr. Busy Williams of Williams Industries, who invested in her business, here today as our future speaker. You will hear from Christina a little later on video about the impact of this experience and the expansion of her business. So I won't be at that anymore. Also with us is Julia Kane of Torchworks, who along with Richard Daisley won the fund access most improved. Right. Torchworks is literally on the move. Just two weeks ago, when we had our Bank and Me Expo in association with the Small Business Expo of Scotia Bank and Upstart Caribbean at the Sky Mall, Torchworks were on that same day moving their studio to a more spacious lubricant location. No? <laughs> they have reported to us triple sales since Bangkok. <laughs> the absence of our third finalist, Chef Dave Sabla, is also testimony to the impact of the show that the show has had on the lives of our contestants. Ladies and gentlemen, when they came on the set that first day, he was already a good chef, but he was a very shy, nervous speaker. And tonight, Dame Sadler is delivering the Dame Elsie Payne Memorial Lecture. Oh. At our alma mater, Queen's Park. This is an honor that few persons have had. And I'm sure Dane would attribute this to being a product of the bank of Last year, when I went to the Food, Wine, and Rum Festival soon after the show had aired, the only booth at which I had to wait because of the crowd being so thick was the one for Chef Dane Sadler. Mm -hmm. Dane has also had offers of equity investment I gather from as far away as Australia from being 
I'd also like to recognize other members of the final six, and one is here, I saw him come in, Mr. Ronnie Morris. All told their success stories. I've been getting them gradually. We really want a project. Um, I don't know, we have to find, maybe the university can take this on, I don't know. <laughs> to really study the impact of the show. I'm just getting it anecdotally, but I think it's something that's worthy of serious study. Um, Ron told me, in fact, at the finale I said, well, where's Ronnie? And um, somebody said, well, Ronnie's in Guyana. Because Ronnie was opening his office in Guyana while we were holding the finale. So even though he didn't make it to the final three, um, through the show, somebody saw him in Guyana, invested in his business, and he now has an office there. <laughs> so, so today, our journey continues, our journey. But for 25 Barbadian businesses, the journey begins. So, I've heard he's a real entrepreneur. <laughs> he found a way to get food for nothing. <laughs> On the other hand, if he had done the same thing that he did at that David's house, for some friends of mine who shoot birds in the swamp, he would have got fuzzed out with a shotgun and a gun. So he missed a bunch of feathers. So the moral of the story is that as a good entrepreneur, you have to be prepared to take risks. And, uh, the only Sometimes you're going to get shot down. Remember Red Jet? <laughs> yeah, well, I got shot down. <laughs> so I can tell you that you're not going to succeed in everything you do. Sometimes you're going to fail. And it could cost other people a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> the next thing now that I would like to speak about is uh, Alison Saunders. This lady over there, she made a very nice presentation to you. That lady is the best. <laughs> when she wants you to do something, she don't get off your back. <laughs> now, I didn't have any plans to come here to speak, but I could not resist this lady. So, it's another, uh, sorry, characteristic of a successful person. Don't give up. She persisted and persisted until I agreed to speak. So I can. Anyhow. <laughs> and the next thing is uh, the impact of the show. This show can have a very serious impact on people's lives. Very serious. Um, I know that Christina. Christina, Christina, yeah. <laughs> Christina Adams has, uh, has done well with her fish farm and so on. In my I haven't tasted any fish yet, but I'm planning to, because I love tilapia. But at the same time, and it will have a very positive impact on all your, your people, contestants and so on, but it can have a very negative impact on you too, namely me. Because since my wife did the last show, for a number of Saturdays, I found myself at loose ends because the economy is doing so good. So we weren't working on Saturday every putting up buildings and so on. So certain people would, would mislead me to a bar in the country called Lemon Arbor. <laughs> and by the time the show was finished, I mean the dog house. So be careful with things that have to be really just straight. <laughs> right. So, now, <laughs> yeah, Christina has taught us a lot, too, in, in, uh, in how hard she works. I kind of expected that this is, uh, when my wife came home and said, look, uh, this, this young lady that's, that's doing fish, she, she's a, she seemed like a good entrepreneur, so I think she got a good thing there. And you love to love you, so let's, uh, why don't you get, look at your job seriously? But I tell you, I did. And, and she taught me some lessons. There's another persistent lady here. 
Right. And she ain't afraid to turn up to work and work in the hot sun in all kinds of jeans and, and things. No fancy stuff. That's why she's going to succeed. I find that too many entrepreneurs in Barbados tend to, to start a business and as soon as it starts to make some money, mm -hmm. they spend the money okay. on foolishness okay. instead of investing the money back into the business to make it grow. Mm -hmm. um, so that's another thing I would like to, uh, to uh, persuade you to do. When you, not if, but when you all start to make some good money, like Ronnie now going, okay, I'm going to make another guy and he's done. <laughs> <laughs> When you start to make some money, avoid investing in fancy cars and big houses and so on and blow it back into the business. I'm driving a little electric car, which I enjoy thoroughly. It is not that expensive. It can run the whole year for less than $900 in electricity, but I am buying the electricity again from the sun. So this is a, an example. When, when I got home with this car, my wife said, you're not going anywhere in that car. <laughs> <laughs> when I married you, you were driving the latest Mercedes event. <laughs> then things got a little rough and you come home with a, 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 a Subaru. <laughs> you don't buy a suit, a Subaru. <laughs> a people car. So I, I know you come home with this little popped up electric car and go over and do it. That's the So I said, but it is going to be very canonical. So I went to England and I was in England. I got an urgent call. Well, I don't know what. This car don't make any noise. I just picked up a woman. I was in the car before. Then they went away. Because she wanted to secret easy. That's the car very, real sweet. So she went down now. And this old lady. But they would have felt the old lady got the worst of it. No, the old lady didn't get the worst of it. This old lady, uh, she went to move off, and the old lady didn't hear nothing in the noise. So she stepped step in front of the car and knocked out. You think the old lady asked for ambulance or anything so? She got up, made the wife and cuss, <laughs> kicked the car, and went down with her business. <laughs> she said, you woman. <laughs> There are still babies like that. <laughs> so, now, this show, this show breeds real entrepreneurs. My, my wife's daughter, Dana, she is studying law, but she is budding entrepreneur par excellence. She's having a, a Pizza sales today, her initiative to make money. On the way coming here, I got a call. Have you remembered to send the money to the housekeeper to buy the pizzas to sell? Now, the, you know the profit margin on this show will be 100%. <laughs> because Papi here providing money. <laughs> and, and the markup is 100. Infinite. So that is entrepreneurial. <laughs> at least at its best. <laughs> the moral of that story is don't expect your workers to get to work before you and start your business for you. You need to get to work and start the business. So that when they get there, it, it, you're ready. Right. Thank you. Another thing is Customers, please think of customers as your as your lifeblood. Don't try to trick them. It don't work. It doesn't work. So I feel English all over. It doesn't work. Um, the, the, I always say, be fair to your customer. If you can sell them, give them a little better deal. Give them a little better deal. If you look on the on our website you will see the motto of Williams Industries. Find ways to give more for less. You can do it. Improve the efficiency a little bit. That's the way you will beat the competition out. By 
and trying to do things that will just improve your ability to give more for them. Um, now, so be fair to your customers and, and your suppliers as well. Um, you will all require suppliers, reliable suppliers, to supply you with, with, uh, with stuff. They, well, whatever business you're in, I'm sure Christina is buying feed from somebody. Now, if she was to adopt the approach that she constantly trying to beat down the price of the, of the feed and so on, there will come a time when the feed might be shortage, there might be a shortage of feed in the market. The never, she's the last person that can get feed. <laughs> so a lot of my friends started businesses when I was first starting my business. And I remember once, not far in the country, but another one. And uh, this fellow was bragging how he had imported a, a container of stuff from Germany. And his plan was to leave it in the, in the port until the port was sold out at auction. And then he would buy the auction at the time to the price. Yeah, that was his plan. So he was going to make a lot of money, and he, and he made a lot of money. But you know what? The word got back to the suppliers in Germany, and they circulated everybody in the industry. So he's out of business. They didn't say he can't buy anybody from any theory. And they always put on the, a, a factor to deal with him, even if he pays cash. So he's out of business. Don't, so be fair to your, to your suppliers. Another, the last thing I want to say is, if, if you have inventory, remember, the prettier your inventory is, the more people can like it. And you understand the judgment they're laughing. And the more they will be inclined to leave without paying for it. <laughs> <laughs> so you've got to be very, very careful to control your inventory. I'm not suggesting anybody wants to steal anything. But it might go missing accidentally. And, and I will tell you another story. How, how inclined some people are to covet what belongs to other people. At two, I think it was 2.30, I was told this morning. A gentleman went on the roof of one of our buildings on Saturday, Sunday morning, and fulcrum out one of our folks or take panels from the roof and stole it. Now can you imagine going to that trouble? He risked going up on the roof, risked falling off, and he was, and he, they got him all on camera. And he, yeah, and he, he, he moving up with this for the take pan on the head. You know, like, you remember the American song? Cock and nuts called? He moved through the yard. Uh, in the wee hours in the morning, I'm going to put about three pile on the heads. I only saw that the sun was a shining, so shocking. <laughs> so, be very, very careful how you set up your business and make sure that, that you, are, you protect your, your inventory and so on from people stealing it. Because they will walk away with it. And when you're sleeping, they're, they're, they're business with the three.